Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 108 of The Murder House by James Patterson and David Ellis. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest you click off the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 108. Justin pulls his car into his garage in East Hampton. The garage door grinds to quillows behind us, so tell me, he says. Tell me where you think Aiden is. Later, I say. Later? Why later? My cell phone buzzes. Caller ID. It says it's Lauren Ricketts. I don't dare answer. I let the call go to voicemail and then play the message on my speakerphone. Murphy, it's Ricketts. I'm not sure what's going on, and I probably shouldn't be calling you, but, but, whatever. I'm calling you. Listen, about 20 minutes ago, Noah Walker had a private conversation with the chief, and next thing I know, Isaac has issued an APB for you. You, they think you're with Justin. I look over at Justin, whose face has gone pale. He mobilized the SWAT teams, Murphy. We're coming after you with everything we have. You should surrender at the station before something bad happens. I can coordinate it with you. Please call me before this gets out of hand. Justin turns and looks at me, the gravity of what we've just heard sinking in. He just released you, and now he's after you again? After talking to Noah, apparently, and here I thought Noah didn't get along so well with the chief. I get out of the car, and Justin follows suit. We go into his house, his beautiful, spacious kitchen. You said you have a gun, I say. Um, yeah, I do, he says, still distracted. Hang on. And a flashlight. I call out to him as he leaves the kitchen. I take a breath. Isaac and Noah got together, had a nice little chat, and now the STPD is after me with full force. Isaac and Noah, they've made a very public show of not getting along so well. An act, an act I fell for. Hook, line, and sinker. Okay, Justin returns to the kitchen with not one gun, but two, holding each of them with two fingers, the barrels dangling down. A regular arsenal, I say, but not only one. A shiny, polished revolver, new, and from the looks of it, unused. The other is a beat-up revolver with a pearl handle, a vintage piece, a thirty-eight special with a very short, maybe two-inch barrel that is probably thirty or forty years old. Take your pick, he says, placing them gently on the kitchen table. I laugh. Take my pick. How old is that thirty-eight special? Justin shrugs. My dad bought it years ago, probably the 70s. This new one I bought, I assume it works. You assume? He shakes his head. Never used it. Bought it for home protection. Some silly notion that I'm safer with it. I have a feeling if I ever had to use it, I ended up shooting myself in the foot or something. You're probably right. I choose the shiny new revolver, hold the gun toward the floor, pop open the cylinder, and confirm the presence of rounds in all six chambers. Justin looks at me, looks at all like he's scared to scared to death of guns he probably is this isn't his thing he isn't cut out for this he's a nice guy a wonderful guy but he lives in a world where people are decent and gracious he doesn't live in a world full of bad guys that's where we differ there's that's where we always differ and the flashlight i say all right he says he removes one from the kitchen drawer and hands it to me then he claps his hands as if he's ready for action but the paleness on his face suggests otherwise where to he asks where do you think aiden is hiding out I stuff the revolver in my back pants. I have to go now, I say. He looks at me. Don't you mean we have to go? No, I mean I have to go. This is my problem, not yours. Jenna, you've done enough. You've given me your gun and a flashlight and a ride, but I can't ask for anything else. For the last time, you didn't ask, he says. He puts his hands on my shoulders. You can't do this by yourself. I may not be a veteran police officer or some Navy SEAL. Shit, I wasn't even an athlete, but you can trust me. I do anything for you, Detective Murphy. Haven't you figured that out by now? I look into their his eyes. Yes, there's something there, something more than gratitude for all his attempts to help me. Maybe what I feel for him is enough. Maybe, but now it's not time to be gauging my emotions. I have to do this. I have to do it alone. I'll just follow you, he says. Not if I shoot you in the leg. He laughs in spite of the circumstances. Then the doorbell rings. We both turn our heads toward the front door. Justin takes a couple of cautious steps backwards and peeks beyond the kitchen, presumably through a window. Police car, he says. East Hampton PD. South Hampton, he says that's Isaac Marks at my front door that is the end of this chapter I will see you guys in the next video bye